Hey guys, if you remember, a couple of videos ago I bought myself an iPod Classic, which you can check out in the card above. Since then however, I realised that it's missing one crucial feature, it does not let you shuffle playlists. Now I bought the iPod to play albums on, so the lack of this feature wasn't too important for me at the time. However, I have a large collection of early Eurobeat music, and listening to one or two albums on repeat instead of listening to the full collection got really tiring. And with the fact I was running out of storage on my classic and wanted to upgrade anyway, I thought, well why not spend that upgrade money on an iPod from the list of iPods that I wanted to own. And here is the one I picked, it's the iPod Nano 6th generation. This was my main choice for various reasons, which I'll show you guys in this video, so let's get right into it. This iPod Nano 6th generation was released in September 2010, meaning it actually has its 10th birthday coming right up. It was released in various different colours, however mine is this gorgeous green. I do also however like the blue and the product red version, the latter being more rare and expensive over here in the UK. I paid just under 30 quid for mine from CX, however ones on eBay go for around £10 more. The design of the 6th gen Nano is nothing short of incredible. On the top we have the volume buttons which are reminiscent of the ones on the iPhone 4, also released in 2010. There is also a power button. On the bottom, there is a dock connector and a headphone jack. If this position of the jack is annoying to you, well in software you can actually rotate the screen, so the jack can face any direction you want. The rear of the iPod has a clip, so like the clip zip I showed off in the earlier video, you can clip this iPod onto your jacket, onto your jeans, onto your bag, anywhere. But yeah, back to the design. The design of this iPod 10 years later is just timeless. The full screen display, the rounded edges and the fun colours make this iPod look very similar to modern iPhones. This iPod is so small and thin that it can comfortably fit in your useless jeans pocket. A device this small, this thin and this pretty looking created 10 years ago is nothing short of impressive and it shows how great and special Apple's designs once used to be. Like look at how smartphones used to look like in 2010. Very few electronic devices from 10 years ago have aged as well as this has in their design. Moving on to the UI of the iPod. What we can see is that it's very similar to what iOS used to look like at the time. However, make no mistake, this isn't iOS. As you can see, we have a grid of icons, one that is customizable. The most interesting icons of note are the radio icon, the fitness icon and the clock icon. The FM radio is worthy of talking about as this would have been the second ever iPod with a radio tuner built in, something I know a lot of people wanted back in the day. In Apple's fashion, they went far and beyond just making a standard radio app though. You can pause the radio and rewind for up to 15 minutes. I cannot state how useful this is, and it's something I wish modern radio apps would let you do. Sometimes a presenter says something that I didn't quite catch but is important, and with this I can rewind to hear exactly what they said. Sadly there is no way to record the radio, however the iPod is theoretically supposed to catch what music is playing and then save it to a list that would get uploaded onto your iTunes. However I haven't been able to get this to work. I'm not sure if the radios are supposed to stream a special signal to the iPod or if it grabs names from RDS, but either way it doesn't work sadly. I can tell you that the reception on this iPod is phenomenal. I used to listen to a lot of radio on my clip zip and the reception was just awful. Here it is much much stronger and it's even still fine when you plug it in, unlike my clip zip where the charging would cause a lot of interference. So yeah, I would have been really happy with this iPod back in the day. So let's talk about the second feature which is the fitness. There is not much to talk about here. The iPod has a step counter so you can see how far you walk. Great feature in 2010, but now with our phones having more accurate step counters, it's not going to be a feature many people are interested in, especially since, as far as I know, there is no way to export the data anyway. The third feature, which is what this iPod is most likely known for, is the fact that you can use it as a watch, a watch that also plays music, radio and county steps. I'm sure that activity trackers were a thing in 2010, and there were a couple of smartwatches that could take calls and receive notifications, but how many do you guys actually remember? I don't remember anything before Android Wear, so I've only found out by a research that stuff like the Sony Ericsson LiveView and Samsung S9110 existed. But this has the beauty of being able to be taken off your wrist and just be used as an iPod. It doesn't have to be just a watch, like the other devices. So how is it as a watch? Well I don't have the watch strap, but from what I can tell you, the fact there isn't a tap to wake or race to wake definitely reduces its usability. You have to press that small button every time you want to see the time. However, the watch faces that Apple provided are very nice looking, and you do have a decent collection of them. Some of these faces even adapt to the colour of your iPod, so if you have the grey one, you're missing out. The iPod is also not water resistant, meaning that in a rainy country like the UK, I'd be scared to wear this outside in case I damage the iPod. It is still awesome for what it is though. Also, this iPod lets you use the inline controls to control playback, and also lets you use the microphone on your headphones to record voice memos with. Shame there isn't a microphone built in though. So let's talk about the main feature of an iPod, the music playback. These nanos come in either 8GB or 16GB storage, which is not great if you want to store your entire music library. However, with my use case only having Eurobeat and Top 40 on this, I still have plenty of space. 
As well as the normal stuff you expect, you can also shuffle playlists, shake the iPod to shuffle your library, and use Genius to intelligently pick songs based on the ones you're listening to. I cannot get this to work for me though, maybe you need iTunes purchase music for it to work. When listening to music, the album art shows up full screen. This iPod, despite having a low resolution display, actually has a high density display, which means that from a distance, the screen is actually extremely clear, something that once again makes this iPod feel extremely modern. It does look cool having this little square displaying what you're listening to full screen, it almost makes it feel like wearing it is a fashion slash music statement. The actual music quality from this iPod is great. I'm not sure if it has a Wolfson DAC or a Surus Logic DAC, but I find this iPod to sound marginally better than the iPod Classic, with the highs being a little brighter and the mids being very slightly clearer. I also like how this iPod lets you crossfade between songs, making your playlist feel like a mega mix. You can also use voiceover if you are visually impaired, which is nice. I almost wish that I had basic voice recognition too, like iPhones had before Siri, but it does have a nice feature set all in all. So with all this love for the iPod, it absolutely pains me to have to return it. My Nano's power button has started to break down after only owning it for two days. If you have been grossed out by my long nails in this video, I need them to be able to press the power button. Since I got this iPod from CX, I do have a warranty, but because these aren't easy to find, it means I have to return it as opposed to getting a replacement. So that is now where I stand. I am utterly bummed out by my iPod failing and I don't really know if I want to buy another one. These 6 days that I got to spend with this iPod were awesome though, and I really like this Nano so much more than my classic just because of the extra features and the tiny portable factor of it. But I may never get to use one again and that makes me really sad. I will let you guys know what decision I will make, but for now, all I can say is this iPod is a lot of fun and will likely go down as one of my favourite iPods of all time.